Hello, and welcome to this episode of the Penny Lane Podcast with Shark. This is a highly anticipated episode, and I was so excited to talk to him. Because it was just me on this episode and not Justin, and I am not an options expert, we talked a lot more about trading psychology, his journey, his thoughts on trading, and I absolutely loved it. It's so fun for me to get to talk about stuff like that. So I hope you enjoy. Please like, subscribe, share, anything you want. Also, we dropped a brand new line of merch. So make sure you check the show notes and, you know, buy some things. Support the pod. Thank you. I put on my makeup. (laughs) Hi, Shark. Welcome to the Penny Lane Podcast. I'm so happy to have you. Yes, thank you for having me. I really appreciate uh, being on here. I'm looking forward to our, our little conversation together. Yeah, for sure. I, you're one of our most highly anticipated guests. So I have a lot of things to talk to you about. The first one is, can we just start by you telling me about the community you've created on FinTwit or your room? Just tell me like how you started that and sort of what, what the vibe's like. Uh, yeah. Um, well, you know, I have, uh, you know, I have, um, a private room that, that I, I help traders learn, um, you know, technical analysis and the psychology uh, side of trading. Um, you know, we're a tight knit group, um, you know, and I, I like it like that. We kind of really try to foster a more, um, family vibe. Um, but, uh, the way it started was, I guess, um, you know, after I started, you know, gaining some success on my own from trading, you know, I, I wanted, I got to a place where I felt like I wanted to give back and kind of give a, um, like a no frills, like no BS kind of perspective on, on how trading work. And at that time I was trading more small caps, um, when I first started, but now, you know, I've transitioned more into options. But, um, you know, as we all know, there's a lot of, I mean, there's manipulation too in large caps, don't get me wrong, but, you know, even more easy with the, with the small caps, you know, and just, just kind of calling things for what they were, you know, as I saw them and, um, getting like-minded people, you know, together. Um, but, uh, but I think that what, what I enjoy is really being able to, you know, because it isn't a huge group and I try to limit the size, um, try to be able to give each person as much individual attention as possible. You know, they can always DM me or personal, you know, personally, we all, we share in the good days, we share in the bad days together and and being able to have that support system, I think, especially in a tight, a tighter knit community, um, you know, is really helpful because obviously, you know, trading has its ebbs and flows and, um, and it's kind of, uh, can be very alienating, you know, cause what, you know, how else do you say, Hey, you know, I lost your month's salary today in one day or something like that, you know, or, yeah. I mean, it's all relative, you know, obviously, you know, losing, you know, 3000 or $4,000 for someone is like losing 200 or 300 for someone else, you know, so it's all relative, but either way, um, having that support system I found has been really, um, you know, helpful for the new traders and say, Hey, look, you know, I've been there before, you know, I didn't quit you know, you can, you can do it. You have to stick with it. Um, there's been really something that, that I, uh, that I, I just enjoy and, you know, I just like helping people and and teaching and trying to help people not make the same, you know, 150 stupid mistakes that every trader usually makes and try to flatten that curve a little bit. But it's tough, you know, trading is, is, you know, you can still lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink, you know, so to speak, or, you know, yep. so. Actually, we talked about that on the singles and doubles episode. Yeah, yeah, he's great. Had, I like him he's a lot. He's so yeah. great. And yeah, we yeah. had a whole episode on trading psychology, and he said, you can tell somebody something 10 times, but until they're ready to hear right. what you're saying, oh, yeah. you're not going to hear it. No, so it's true. almost like a, yeah, it's almost kind of like an addict kind of thing. You know, it's a interest, a weird, you know, uh, analogy, but it's, you know, no, it, it's unless exactly someone, like that, you know, drinking on the street, you know, and, but if they're not ready to get sober, you know, then they, then they're not going to get sober, you know, and it's until yeah. you've taken those losses and taken those hits, how many times do I need to blow up my account or 
whatever it is until I realize that, okay, if I want to take this seriously, then this is what I need to do. Um, and that, that amount of times that they got to make the mistakes is different for everyone. So it's, it's not a single straight path. I wish there was, you know, but it's, yeah. you know, no one has a, a straight path to that realization, you know? We were talking before we started recording about me learning to trade on the computer, which I've been pretty public about that journey. But um, it was so interesting how that happened because so many people said to me, like, you you need to trade on the computer. You need to trade on the computer. And then finally, my friend AC, who taught me how to trade on the computer, it probably took three months of like, you can trade on the computer and I'll help you trade on the computer when you're ready. And I was like, oh, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. And then I had to like be ready and like carve out time for that. Well, I think that that the toss, you know, is that what you're trading on think or swim? Yeah. I think at Uh first, you know, even the, even the mobile platform can be a little intimidating at first, you know, you, there's so many different things you can do, ways you can set it up with the flex grid and all that. Um, there's so many ways to customize it. So it definitely takes some time, you know, fiddling with it and, and finding out a, a layout that works for you. Um, but I think it's it's definitely worth it. You know, I mean, just like you did or, you know, I, I had a regular job at, at first as well. And I was just trading off my phone, you know, at the office in between doing my other work and stuff like that. And now whenever I try to trade on my phone, I'm like, this is impossible. You know, I'm like, this is so hard. How did I do this? You know, for sure. Um, I because had now, to go into, you know, it's like yeah. you see the tape, you can't see everything all at once. I mean, it's just like different time frames at the same time looking at you, you have none of that. I had to go into work for a power hour today and I was trying to let I wanted to overnight this thing, but I needed to move my stop loss up. And I was like on my phone and I was like how does you, how do you do this? But like, yeah. I knew how to do it a couple of weeks ago, but I just like couldn't, it was just took, took too much. Yeah. 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 A lot of people I've heard it say that the toss test, uh, the toss, um, even the app, like I said, is kind of intimidating, but once you, you know, like anything, once you mess around with it enough, you know, you get used to it. And, um, the desktop is great, you know, cause you have the active ladder, you know, you have, you have a little, you know, a little space where you can set up for your orders and your, your quantity amount. So, I mean, I love being on desktop now. I mean, it's, it's, it's great. You know, you really can, you know, um, initiate your fills, your buys and sells a lot quicker. So it's, it's, it's nice once you get the hang of it, but it takes time, but it's worth for it. For sure. <laughs> well, why don't you, why don't we go back and you tell me how you got into trading? Uh, yeah, well, um, it's actually interesting. I always kind of had a entrepreneurial mindset. I think maybe in my, I got a little started uh, a little late in my, uh, you know, started in my journey, but, um, I always kind of had kind of a nagging sensation that I wasn't getting my, my time was worth more than what I was getting paid for at a job. And, um, and, um, I was working at a, a Apple computer um, repair shop in, in Brooklyn. Um, and uh, one of the guys from the front desk, I was working logistics and purchasing manager and stuff like that. One of the guys came to me and said, oh, you know, hey, I made, you know, $300 on this penny stock. You should look into this, you know. And I was just like, ah, you know, I come kind of come from a musician, like kind of more artsy background so uh, you know which basically means you know you're poor <laughs> you know <laughs> um and so i was just like oh you know what is this like you know both like ah this didn't pay it any mind uh but then for whatever reason i think i had a long day at work and i got off of work and went to a bar <clears throat> and just googled you know day trading or penny stocks or something like that you know and of course, now I know that a lot of the things that I came across in, in, on YouTube is a lot of marketing. You know, I came across the Tim Sykes videos, there and it Warrior, is. you know, Ross, you know, the Ross yep. uh, Warrior Trading guy, you know, um, everyone's favorite trading ginger, I guess. And um, but I, I saw the potential and I was uh, kind of intrigued by that. I said, OK, well, you know, I need to kind of figure this out. And this was in. 2016 or 17 and this kind of when bitcoin started going on its first run so the market was really hot a lot of the i mean mara was three dollars then 
So, you know, Mara was going, you know, was moving a lot. And, <laughs> I love and so, Mara. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, it was $3 then now it's what 40 or 38, you know, only yeah. if we knew, but, um, <laughs> but, um, I kind of went through the same, the same thing as everyone I got in. I, you know, I put in $1,500, something cheap or whatever, which was a lot of money to me at the time, you know, and For I was sure. trading and I brought it up to $5,000. I was like, wow, this is, this is so easy. I'm going to be a millionaire. <laughs> you know, this is perfect. And then the market switched, you know, very similar to what we saw maybe right after COVID, that COVID summer, you know, the hottest yeah. COVID summer when everyone was a J trader, you could throw anything at the wall and people were making boatloads of money. It was so easy. Um, but then the market just switched, you know, and I didn't know really technical analysis. I didn't know. I would just see something from stock twits and I'd be like, oh, okay, you know, this guy's got a lot of followers. I'll get in. But it would sure. always just keep going up. It was so easy. Um, but sure enough, as quickly as that $5,000 came to me <laughs> over the next couple of months, it all went away. Um, but I knew I saw the potential, you know, and I knew that there was something into it. So from there, um, I was in, um, Cam, the man's room. Uh, I don't okay. know a lot, of, a lot of people know him, but then everyone left and everyone went to Atlas and I went over to Atlas, uh, you know, and I was there for, for a long time until I, I left and, and really, I, I really learned how to trade, um, small caps there, you know, and kind of, um, it was, it was a lot of a different you know because it was a lot less members it, uh, so it was it was a different vibe but um i will never um discount what i learned it you know from from that room and uh and from there as i started to shift more into options i kind of you know just kept studying on my own and um i was actually able to get a job at jp morgan and i uh, had some had some um interesting. I didn't work directly with the traders or anything like that, but I was around them and got to have some conversations and learn some, some interesting things, you know, cause on the side, if I would see them, I said, Oh, you know, Hey, you know, I'm into trading and what do you think about this? Or, you know, and they would, you know, tell me certain things. Now they, they obviously aren't very day trade focused. Um, but still it's very interesting to get into the minds of people that are working on a trading desk that are managing, you know, tons of money um so that was a really interesting experience um and then yeah i i you know a couple of accounts blown up later and then finally i started to catch my stride and and um and then was able to to take the leap to go out on my own uh but um you know i made all the mistakes and and that are possible you know through the through that time and blew up uh you know a few accounts so you know i kind of like to say that anyone you know you can never really trust anyone that hasn't blown up an account before because if they're saying that you know they're they're probably lying or you know something's not right because it's <laughs> it's kind of like a rite of passage unfortunately Oh God, don't say that. That's my only thing I've done good as a trader <laughs> is I've never blown up an account. That's there not to go. say I haven't had to put money back into the account, but I've well, never like <laughs> fully lost the money. <laughs> yeah. Well, Other than that, ahead, I've done everything wrong. <laughs> then you're ahead yeah, then you're ahead of curve. But I mean, you know, like I said, I mean, I I've told myself, hey, I'm never gonna make this same mistake again, whether it's oversizing sure. or revenge trading. And I've undoubtedly done it again you know so obviously it's, it's always uh it's always a work in progress and you always got to remind yourself of your rules and your principles um because otherwise you know it's you know it's not going to work out so yeah, that's uh, that's it did you ever have a like rock bottom moment of like i have to implement these rules or not revenge trade or whatever it is. Well, I mean, after you blow up two accounts, yeah, I think, you know, and I was, <laughs> I, you know, I was working at the same time, you know, so I did have another income. So yeah, I, I mean, I knew that, that I, I, um, you know, could always get another stake, you know, if I needed to, but, um, I don't know if I ever hit a rock bottom like that, but I've certainly had, times where I didn't realize the market sentiment 
has changed kind of what we're dealing with right now. I mean, the last, you know, summer has, was okay. This past summer was still a little slow, but now September and October have just been very choppy. I'm not a lot of momentum. And um, I think, you know, stepping back and, and, and when I've been in that and, and I, you know, there was like a time where I think I had like three, lo- three red weeks, you know, in a row or something like this, you know, I said, okay, I need to, you know, step back and say, what's going on with the market? What's different? What do I need to analyze and change to be able to trade through this market? Um, uh, those have been the times where I was kind of just like, okay, I can't take another red week, you know? Um, yeah. Yet not that I was going to blow up, but still, it feels like rock bottom when you when you're when you have three red weeks. You know, it feels that way. So totally. regardless of whether or not you're going to blow up, or you know, officially or not, I've certainly been there many of times. Um, just kind of you know, and and it stinks because I think for traders too, like their P and L or their their portfolio kind of gets so much attached to who they are in a sense, like and I like with their identity. And then when you're not doing well, you feel dejected, you feel like a POS, you know, you feel, you know, like you're the stupid, you know, everyone's making money except for you. And, you know, it's, it's very hard. It can be very hard emotionally. Um, and that's why I kind of think that, you know, being a professional trader, although, you know, it is great and you can get a lot of freedom, can kind of be a little... Um, over glamorized you know uh, uh, especially on social media because it is hard and every great trader can still go through bad weeks bad months that doesn't mean you're a bad person or you're a bad trader it means that your strategy isn't working it means that the market sediment maybe has changed and that's when you need to have the self-realization to step back and say okay let me reassess the situation let me see what's going on what's different and how do i adapt accordingly So, yeah, for sure. And, you know, it's so hard to step away. It's so hard to be like, what I'm doing isn't working. I've certainly been there before, just been in like a terrible hole on a day. And to be able to just walk away and take that loss versus like, let me like, try to climb back up. That's a hard, a hard thing to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that what you know, what is what and and it's and it's funny you know because it, you know going into the psychology aspect a little bit i think that when you're down like that the mentality that a lot of people put on is you know how do i make it back as quick as possible or sure. or you know i need to go in heavier on the next trade which is completely the wrong thing to do because you're not obviously in sync with the market, you know, and, and when you're going to go heavier, it's just going to cause more, more pain. And and the market is so, um, uh, kind of, it it sucks you in. It's so, you know, um, encapsulating on you, you know, and you just kind of want to get in, but it's again, having that self-awareness, being able to step away and say, um, and not being stubborn, you know, with them, right? Not saying, why isn't this working? It wasn't working, you know, it was working right. before. It should work now. Um, to be able to step away from that is is really important and not to oversize, you know. Again, you know, many people have said it's it's a it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. So you don't have to make back all those losses, you know, right away. Build it back, get get in the groove with, you know, get in a better communication with the market and you know, those small wins, those base hits, you know, are going to uh, add up. It's not always about a a huge win, you know, every time, especially when it gets choppy, you know, you have to take 30% gains or whatever. I know it's a little different in small cap terms, you know, that might be 10% or 15%, but you take those little gains um, and that's fine. And, And then you get in the sync with the market and then, okay, I'm feeling a little bit more comfortable getting my, getting my confidence back. Can I push it a little bit more, you know, and it's, it's, it's really like walking a tight rope, uh, t- you know, a tight rope a lot of times, um, between yourself and the market. For sure. For sure. I said recently that it was, I feel like the market is like holding up a mirror that exposes every single flaw you have. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah, like yeah. the mirror just is not going to go away. It just keeps uncovering flaws. Like, I never knew that I was a greedy person. 
Right. Apparently right, I yeah. am super greedy. Right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it, it's, 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 it's not the market, you versus the market. It's really you versus yourself and all the things right. that you, you know, you have you know, issues with. And um, it's always different for a lot of people. It could be, like you said, it could be greed. It could be, it could be, um, you know, revenge trading. I don't know what, the, I don't know if that's stubbornness I'm, or holding on to losers. I guess that would be being stubborn. Um, but yeah, it's different for everybody and, and different um, weaknesses can show themselves at different times in your career. You know, you might have a, uh, you know, a couple of months stent where greed is, is an issue for you. You might have a few months where um, being stubborn is an issue for you or FOMO, chasing, chasing moves either to the upside or downside. Um, and those might, you know, like I said, reveal themselves at different times in your career. Okay, so we were also talking about just the general psychology of trading um, before we started. And I'm so interested in that. Have you read any books or anything like that to sort of build up a strong mental foundation for your trading? Yeah, I think, I mean, a lot of people have mentioned it before, um, you know, he's super famous, you know, Mark Douglas is, is, a, is, a, is a classic and definitely a great starting off uh, point for everybody, um, you know, in, in trading. Um, a lot of the things that he said, um, which is actually interesting, it has a bit of a um, trading and I feel like Buddhism in our Eastern Eastern philosophy has, has a lot to do with trading, you know, letting go of the outcome you know, not expecting things. Um, also understanding that, that anything can happen to. So not only are you not, not expecting anything, but you're also are open to something running higher or running lower, you know, depending on your position. Um, so he's really great. You know, I really, I really, and he's got, you know, stuff on YouTube too, if you don't want to buy one of the books so you can just, he's got seminars on there. That's been great to watch. Um, another book that I really like is called, um, the power of habit, um, uh -huh. by Charles, yeah, Charles Duhigg. I don't know if I'm saying his name, right. That's a great book because that goes into the way that we, you know, cog cognitively that we formulate, you know, our habits and our minds in different ways to program our minds to form better habits. Because I, you know, a lot of people will say, you know, I'm going to make these trading rules and I'm going to post a sticky, you know, note on my computer. Well, it doesn't really work like that. You know, you have to go a bit deeper to be able to understand where, um, you know, where your habits are kind of coming from and how to, you know, reprogram yourself on or condition yourself, I should say, on how to be able to create new ones and better ones uh, for you. So yeah, those are two, um, two great uh, resources that I've really enjoyed uh, in my journey as far as, um, you know, uh, the psychology aspect of it. But, um, but yeah, I, I, I think that, you know, I've said before too, that, you know, it's not trading. A, we all know technical analysis. That's really kind of easy. You know, that's not the, that's not the hard part about trading. The hard part about trading is the you versus you, the mirror staring back at you going, you dummy, you know, you idiot. Why did you <laughs> oversize or whatever? You know, why did you FOMO? And that's the hardest part about trading. And that's why, and that's what separates the Wayne Gretzky's, the Michael Jordan's from, you know, the, the B level players or the bench players. It's the, the people that can get a hold of that, um, psychology. And, uh, and it's, it's just so interesting how it's so easy to say these things, but putting them into practice is, is the biggest, you know, the biggest issue. Um, you know, I like to say that like, like the difference between knowledge and wisdom is, you know, knowledge, you know, you can, you can say it to someone, you can tell somebody, it, but wisdom is putting it into practice. You know, it's like ethics or applied ethics, you know, living out, you know, those, those, those principles in your lives, which is obviously always the trickier part, but yeah. So you said you were a guitarist. Yeah. Yeah. Is that right? Musician. Yeah. Musician. It, do you play guitar or is it a different yeah I type play of guitar a couple no yeah I play guitar and I sing and I play a couple of different instruments but guitar is my guitar is my main one yeah cool well so before I was a trader or I still am a painter oh, okay you can yeah. see some of 
here's my paintings. Anyway, like an oh here. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a little hard to see, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's kind of like the the, like, the web the camera is um, yeah focusing. Uh, <laughs> at, I'm an abstract painter and have been forever. Oh, and that's great. There's so many things that are similar to me about painting and trading, which weird, right? But yeah, like I'm looking at a canvas and from start to finish, I am choosing the way I get through that canvas and sort of every stroke then informs the next stroke or it takes away space or it adds space. So it's very much like choose your own adventure. And that's what I love so much about the market in trading is there's like infinite possibilities and I get to choose the way I navigate through there. So I use a lot of my painting techniques actually to like trade with. Yeah, I like that. I like that. The reason that I brought it up is because obviously if you're a musician, you understand flow and being in flow with your art or your music is so, it's just exactly the same to me as trading. Like you're either in flow with the market and trading well, or you're not, and you need yeah. to like figure out a way to get yeah. in flow yeah, with the, the market. Yeah, the market's like, hey, you know, we're in E minor now, or we're in uh, A major, <laughs> and you're playing in D minor, you know, or whatever. And yeah. This is not the right key for what. No, um, I completely uh, agree, especially for day trading. You know, I think I posted on my Twitter before or something like, you know, day trading's a lot like playing jazz. You know, you you kind of got to, it, it's a total flow thing, just like, just like, yeah. you know, your, you know, what you said. And also, I think it's also kind of handy to, um, you know, ha- be an artist or have that side of you because um, I think a lot of art or, or that kind of thing and creativity comes from intuition. And, um, Mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's a lot of different styles of trading. Also, as you said, you can paint your own canvas, you know, some people, you know, I'm I'm speaking more from an options, um, mindsets, you know, you, you can just trade straight directional single leg calls or puts, but you, there's, you know, uh, butterflies, you know, calendar spreads, debit spreads, there's a hundred ways to skin a cat and make money, you know, in the market. Um, but, um, but having, uh, intuition a lot of times, um, uh, coming from that creative side, I feel like can be very, um, helpful in the market. Um, you know, again, there are some traders that are interested in, um, kind of like waiting for confirmation. Um, you know, I've never really been into that too much. Um, you know, I like, <laughs> would rather, I, I would rather get in at a, at a good support or something like that, or a good demand level. Um, and then I'm selling into the breakout and some people sell or buy in the breakout, you know, um, which is a right. different strategy, but having that, um, that creative mindset, um, and being able to kind of try to see, uh, into the future or trying to, you know, anticipate, uh, moves, um, I think can be, can be very helpful because, you know, um, as, as the breakout traders are buying the breakout, I'm selling, you know, I'm selling already into those people that are buying because, you know, I you know, was in before, but, um, but yeah, I, I totally agree with you with the whole art thing. You want to think like an artist, but act like a scientist, you know, right. use the intuition, but have the plan, your trading plan beforehand, which is very logical based, you know, very, okay. My stop loss is $70. My profit target is first scale would be, you know, $72 or whatever it is. Um, that's the scientist side of it, you know, where you have your training plan, you have your roadmap, but foreseeing into the future, this is a potential. Oh, if it breaks over the 72, then I can see the potential of it going to 72, 75, or then I can see us going up to, you know, the next number. up. So, um, that's that's you know having that that whole mindset of kind of projecting well i mean that's exactly the same as art too because like how many nudes did i draw in college like hundreds (laughs) but then like the the day that you can draw a nude and i'm like oh it looks like me is so similar to trading like to you can know like if the EMA is crossed or if it gets to support or there's all of these different things in your mind that you can apply to it. But then like at the end of the day, 
you have to trade like yourself too, which yeah. I love. If it was just straight up like memorize these 50 things and when the stars align, that is when you take the trade. That's not something I'm interested in doing really. I'm like a vibe, a vibe trader. <laughs> <laughs> well, then if it was that easy too, everyone would be rich and everyone would be sure. doing it, right? Yeah. <laughs> sure. So anyway, I was just, I'm happy to talk to somebody else who has a little bit of that perspective. Well, yeah, I was going to, most... I was going to ask you <clears throat> about the, um, the Penny Lane, you know, the, are you, you, are you a big Beatles fan? Love the Beatles, but mostly I just love like bands, live music, concerts, like the character Penny Lane, the sort of like hippie oh, going to oh, concerts. From that, oh yeah. From, from that, the uh, movie. What was that movie? Um, Almost Kate Famous. Hudson. Yeah. yeah Almost from Famous. Almost yeah. Famous. Kate yeah, Hudson. Yeah, yeah. She's just like the ultimate. Yeah, hippie. Band girl. <laughs> yeah, that's where that's where it comes from. But like, yeah, love the Beatles. <laughs> that's a great movie. Very uh I love the script on that movie too. There's a lot of like one liners so from good. that movie that are really like, you know, if you just think about them, you're like, damn, that's a you know, that's it that makes you think. <clears throat> also the scene with t- the tiny dancer scene. Oh, when like, they're on the when, bus, yeah. Yeah. Epic scene. Love it. So, um, also everyone we have on this podcast is an engineer, which is a different side of the brain than I have. Like engineers make really, really good traders. So yeah, I feel yeah. like I'm kind I've, of I've, off I've on a, my own island. <laughs> I've, I've come, a, I've come across a, a few that, you know, a few traders that are, that are engineers. I'm not sure if it's, I don't know. Cause I don't know much about engineering. I'm not sure if it's a statistical thing or I don't really know what's involved in the engineering pr- profession. And I am sure that there are, you know, many different facets of it that you can be, you know, uh, depending on what you're engineering. But, um, I've noticed that as well, that a lot of, a lot of people are either have a background in that or, or come from, come from that kind of that mindset. So, and, and, but that's also another thing that I kind of, love about trading is that you know it doesn't really care the market doesn't care if you're a guy a girl black or white rich or poor i mean you know you get a a little bit of money and you get in the market and you take the time to learn and study you know technical analysis study yourself study the psychology you can make great money on it and and the market has no bias about anything it will it will be your best friend but it will be your worst enemy it's totally impartial. It's you know, which is kind of, in a way, reminds me of of a kind of like the universe in a sense. You For know, sure. it's kind of just sure. uh, an impartial kind of uh, beast, and it is what you make of it, and that's up to you. You know, if you want to, you know, just in a life kind of, um, you know, mindset. If you want to see dirt everywhere in your life, you're going to see dirt everywhere in your life. But if you want to see the positive side, then you're going to see the positive side. Um, the hard part is when the, when you're losing is to be able to see the positive side because you don't feel like you could ever see the positive side. You just feel like the worst, but that's why that's the test of the market. And I, I tell my traders a lot, you know, when, when, when it gets a little tricky in the market, um, you have to love it. You have to love trading to be, to be successful at it, because if you don't love it, if you don't truly love it, there's no way you're going to make it through the days that you know, again, whatever the ratio is, the $500 lost days, the $2,000, $3,000 lost days, bigger accounts, you know, $10,000 lost days, whatever is big to you, you know, you're never going to make it through those unless you really love the market because it is always at one point going to test you and then going to say, do you want this? Yes or no? You know, do you want to keep going? And that's up to everyone to decide. So how much do you love it that, that nobody is born a good trader? Like (laughs) that makes me so happy. Like it just means like I have just as much of a chance as anybody else. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. I really love that about it. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. It's an equal opportunity employer for your misery (laughs) or your success. (laughs) For sure. Okay. So you're in Cam the Man's room. Were you a founding member of Atlas? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say you know a founding uh, founding member, but I was probably 
in there when it had, I don't know, 200 people, you know, when everyone kind of a bunch of us people migrated. Um, and then it just, you know, kept growing from there. But uh, I, I was I was in there. And then, you know, the, the setup was a bit different. Um, I'm not sure if they allowed everyone to post on the main trading floor at that time. But even at that, even I recall that it was the main trading floor was still a bit congested. So uh -huh. actually what, um, what, what I did with um, a trader, um, Buddha and another trader, uh, Joker uh, and, and B-Dog, we started a different room. We asked uh, PJ if we could start a different room called, uh, what well, we called it Scalp, Scalp Team or Scalp Chat at the time. Now yeah. it's the Momo floor. So we started another little subdivision where we would all hang out and do kind of our own thing. Um, and then we started getting on voice on there and we started doing live trading like that. And then around that time, um, bear, uh, bear fucker, you know, I don't know if we're allowed to say the, nope, we're fine. No. <laughs> <laughs> he, he came on, he's a good friend of mine. Uh, we've actually hung out in real life. I mean, he's a great dude. Um, hey, super would smart. You ask him to check his DMS. I'd love to have him on the podcast. I just, yeah, he's great. Uh, okay. I ha yeah. I haven't spoken to him a while, but I'll, I'll definitely be like, Hey, you know, you got to get on here and speak <laughs> Cause he's, he's, he's been trading in the market, I think for, I don't know, 15 or 20 years now. So the, the wealth of knowledge that he brought into the scalp room or, you know, Momo team now was uh, really in, invaluable. And it was, and actually he was the first person that told me, Hey, you know, um, uh, you need to look into options. And I was like, oh, you know, what's this? And he kind of tried to explain it to me, the Greeks, you know, Delta Gamma. And I was like, my mind started melting. I'm like, <laughs> what are you talking about? This is so confusing. I was very intimidated. But then I started looking into it and I saw the percentage returns and um, I was like, wow, okay. Now I know why he told me I need to learn about these. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so he, he was he was nudging me on to get onto that uh, that train, and I'm so happy that he did, you know, because now I've really found a home and a love for for that, you know, for options um, particularly. But um, but yeah, so we were over there, and and it, and it grew our our whole kind of group just grew, and it kind of became a little own it's a little own subset and it's a, a family within within Atlas, and. Um, it was great for a while. We had a lot of fun and we you know we would joke around on voice and it was just uh it was just fun, you know. Yeah. Um and and that was really great and it just it you're just hanging out with the hanging out with your friends, you know, and and, and making money or losing money on some <laughs> trades, but but still everyone was sharing good information and and great knowledge and and uh, Rodessa was in Rodessa, you know, came in the he's He's not in there anymore, yeah. but he, he used to be a big part of there as well. And um, and it was great. I always kind of, you know, that will always have a special place in my heart for that time. And, and, and you know, I'll cherish it for what it was at that part of my journey. And, you know, once I started doing options more, I was kind of just left less active and kind of yeah. faded away from it. So, um, but yeah, it was it was uh, it was a lot different then, you know, because then Atlas didn't have so many people. If you would message, because I know you're, um, you know, with with uh, Mullins and Brad was AC Slater at the time. Yeah. And um, but this is when if you actually DM them on on Discord that they would actually answer you. You know, I'd be like, hey, am I drawing yeah. this wedge right? You know, I'd be like, yeah, man, that's <laughs> you know good, and you know that you know keep it up, and you know, and and now thinking that any of these guys would answer you. Maybe they do. I don't know, you know, but yeah. the amount of messages they probably get now is like way too many. So it was a lot different. Um, but it was great to be able to learn some tips and tricks from, from these guys, um, um, back then. And, uh, and yeah, I'll always be thankful for that. And, and, you know, cause I looked up to them so much, you know, I saw these guys, they had, whatever, 10,000 followers on sock twits. I wasn't really in FinTwit at the time. I didn't even know that that existed for, you know, Twitter for, for trading, um, you know, but to have someone who was so good and, and had so many followers to actually answer me and give me a little guidance was like, oh my God, you know, this is so cool. But that's also kind of why I, you know, started my own room, um, you know, to not because I'm, you know, super popular or anything like that, but just because I, 
have been through the trenches. So, you know, I've done all the mistakes and now I can give back um, to other traders who are trying to set out on the same journey that I did, you know? So, so it's a, you have a paid room now. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, I uh, kind it's of like good. that because, well, you know, obviously that's somewhat controversial and it is fin controversial twit, in the fin world. Yeah. 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 But it really allows you to narrow down lurkers or people who aren't really there to learn. And if you're going to pay, I used to be in a paid room and I was there every freaking morning. Like, right, I, right, I mean, yeah. you know, just. I think there's a fine line because I do know some rooms that, I mean, they charge quite a bit of money, you know, 250, 200 something dollars a month, you know, and I mean, and that's, that's fine. All well and good. I mean, that's a little expensive because it's not my main source of income that doesn't really you know it's not really about the money for me it's more about like my, my time that's really right that's what it's about but um but i i totally agree with you you know if you're paying for something you're way more likely to take it seriously it means you have you're showing actual initiative um and yeah i i didn't never wanted a huge you know and still even now like i said i don't want a huge room I want to be able to give individual attention to the people who want it, who are paying for it, who have the questions, who have the thirst for it. Um, that's, you know, the, the whole tr kind of troll or the whole, you know, filtering of the people that are serious and not, uh, why am I going to spend 15, 20 minutes trying to help someone on a chart or whatever that, that is just not, that doesn't care. But if one of my, you know, sharks message me and says, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm here for you. And, you know, if you're having a hard time or whatever, you know, I'm, I'm always there and I've even had phone calls, you know, personal phone calls with some of my, my members, um, helping them through stuff psychologically, um, whatever it might be. And that's something that I love to be able to offer that I feel like is special. Um, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the sharks have said that to me, Oh, I've never had a phone call, you know, with, with someone before that, you know, and I really appreciate that. And that's, that's a great feeling for me, you know, and I, and I love to be able to do that. So that's, that's, that's nice. I mean, that, I'm just sitting here listening, like, you have such a nice vibe and you're so calm. I'm sure that that is, I'm, I have not been in your room, but I would think that you would be a fantastic leader for a room like that with a small group of people. And I'm sure you've, like, taught and sort of brought up so many people that can also be leaders in that room. And what yeah, a great that just ethos <laughs> yeah yeah that's and um, thank you first off but um <laughs> but yeah that is something that's been really great i've had a couple of traders that have been with me for a while and said like even for for example for today i i didn't i didn't trade that well in the market it's it's right now at least i don't i'm kind of just you know um not attached to much of the small cap so i don't know what that's like right now as much it's not good but, um, it's not yeah, good yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but even in, in even in the large cap market uh right now we're seeing like a lot of moves uh like really early in the morning for like an hour an hour and 15 minutes and then all the momentum just disappears and it goes into chop city um yeah. and but i had a couple of other traders who were alerting things you know members will will say their own plays and just killing it um that have been with me for a while and and you know making great calls and that is um that's really rewarding to me you know um because I'm it's not sure. also about it's not really also about you know people following my calls or my trades but it's about have teaching the other people the foundation to be able to make their own plays and see see things that might i might not even see or i might miss you know and then for them to share yeah. that and potentially help other other people in my room um that's that's really the awesome thing so um that's yeah that's 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 definitely very very rewarding i love that so much in um brad mullins interview that he did he was like being able to teach someone what I do so that they so that they can point out something that I haven't seen is like the greatest reward. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, Brad, I can't say enough good things. Like of all the, of, you know, there are a couple of people I, I still like, you know, in Atlas. Um, but Brad was definitely someone that I felt like was different in a way. I don't know. He just. Yeah. Um, I don't know, maybe just to, I don't know, it's hard or whatever. Like I said, me and him had a, quite a few um, personal DMs going back and forth when I was starting. And uh, he's just a great guy. And 
He's so and great. I, I, I always, I always really, uh, really enjoyed his, his viewpoint and his heart and um, what he was all about. Yeah, for sure. And it's, it's just, it's amazing in the way he just cares about people and sort of the community. And he's always, he's, he's kind of like a Ted Lasso. He just does <laughs> the right thing. Which <laughs> yeah, and I really it, like being around. It, it, yeah, yeah. It's a double-edged sword because I, I feel the same way. I truly care about, you know, my members. Like if I, you know, uh, have a bad day, not only do I, am I upset on my own trading, you know, but I'm just bummed out for my, you know, my members, you know, and I guess yeah. you know, I, I make a joke like, oh, I'm like too soft for the market in a sense, you know, because like <laughs> you're just supposed to be like, it's about money and that's all that matters. But um, no, it's it's just super important for me, for the people that I am working with, that they do well um, and that they are, that they're, and if they are losing, that I can do whatever I can to try to help them, guide them in the right way to um, mitigate those losses, to work through the tough times and to, and we're all a big support, you know, system for each other, you know, because there's going to be great, you know, great plays and there's going to be bad plays. So, and the market is, is, uh, and like you said, I mean, the small caps, I guess it's the same, um, as it is in the large caps. It's not easy to trade right now. So, uh, mm -hmm. I think that the market is testing everybody on how much they love it and their discipline, their sizing, you know, I'm, I'm telling everyone right now, it's not the time to be going in heavy. It's not the time to be averaging down a bunch on plays if you're down. It's not the time to be doing risky things. Um, hopefully, my my thought is that we're just going to go through this. Hopefully, for uh, maybe maybe for the rest of this month, maybe a little bit in uh, November, and then hopefully we we'll get that Santa Claus rally, which um, <sighs> which I'd be looking forward to. I feel like I don't know how much been... that's going to affect the small caps, but. We've been waiting, I think we were all waiting for the third week in September, and every day past that, well, waiting through September for those three weeks was agony, and then I every know. day since then, it's like, when, when is it coming back? Like, this I isn't know. fair. We waited. We got spoiled in that last COVID, the last hot, you know, because that two summers ago, that was, you know, an anomaly in the market. It was so great. And it was, it was a lot of fun. And, uh, and the market just hasn't been the same since then, you know, to be sure. honest. Yeah. Uh, you know, so we all got spoiled, but, um, but that's, that's, that's the market, you know, you got to go through the ebbs and flows. And, you know, like I said, you got to adapt, you got to step back. I'm playing way smaller right now, smaller gains, but also, okay, smaller losses. So I'm fine with that. Um, and the, you know, the majority of the money that traders make a lot of times is in maybe four months out of the out of the total year three months you know maybe separated between two months or one month in little pockets that's when you know when the market gets like that that's when you push the size that's when you go for it the rest of the time you're maintaining you're getting the small wins you're you're focusing on not blowing up or not eating away too much of your profits um yeah so i mean i'm telling all my traders you know size down you know, um, you know, cut back on your risk, you know, your risk profile. Maybe if you're taking uh, options, again, the risks are a little different, but if you're taking 15%, you know, losses, then you're taking 35% wins. You're not going to get as many hundred percent plays or as many, you know, 75% wins. Um, but that's okay. As long as you adjust your risk accordingly, you know, you can't be, yeah, taking 35% gains, but then taking 30% losses consistently, you know, the, the math isn't, you know, it's not gonna, it's not gonna equal out. So it's yeah. all about that adaptation. We have a couple of questions. One specifically about sizing. Could you speak a little bit about how you think about sizing or any advice you could give on that? Yeah. Yeah. I saw that. That was, um, that was a great question. Well, for me, I, um, I have um, like a playbook basically, and it's kind of um, something that I, I learned from uh, Mike Mike Bellafury, uh from SMB, uh, you know, Capital. You want to develop, and I, I actually I posted on Twitter about this. I think Rodessa was talking about it too. 
um, you know, have a, having a playbook. I have my A setups, my, you know, my A plus setups, my B setups, my C setups. And for each one of those setups, I'm uh, categorizing different risk, you know, different risk, different sizing profiles. Now, that being said, just like how you said that trading can be so personal, like painting or music for a style of music or a type of painting that you want to um, have, um, what's an A plus setup for me might not be an A plus setup for you. What's a B for me might not be a B for you. So everyone needs to take the time to kind of develop their own playbook, uh, develop their own, um, their own uh, system or, or, or thing like that, uh, you know, things like that. Uh, and then even though right now when the market gets a little bit more tricky to trade, even if it's an A plus setup, I'm still not, I'm not going to go in the same amount of size, even on an A plus setup when the market's more tricky, I'm still going to pull it back a little bit because I'm understanding that the overall market, you might get a lot of fake breakouts, a lot of chop, whatever the case might be. I still might, scale it down some, you know, so whatever, if my A plus setup is a thousand dollars that I'll put in, um, but the market is a little bit different. Okay. That might be seven fifty or six fifty or something like that. Or, you know, well, like I said, it's, it's, you know, in proportion to your account size. Uh, so, um, so there isn't one, again, there isn't one single path that everyone can follow. Um, you know, so there isn't a cut and dry answer, but I would say is over time and experience, develop that playbook, find out what you like, you know, I mean, if a stock has a PR, you know, from the small cap days or even, excuse me, from the large cap uh, world, if a stock has a PR, maybe an upgrade or whatever, and it's setting up in a nice bull flag, you know, in the 15 minute Okay, for me, that's like, a okay, I'm taking this thing, you know, like, for sure, you know, um, that might be an A plus setup for me. Uh, or something if SPY is selling off, and it's coming into a big demand zone. I'm counter trend trading. So it's not going to be an A plus setup. But I might see that it's coming into a really strong support or demand level on the daily. Then I might say, okay, this might be a B or a C, but I am counter trend trading, so it is a little bit more risky, you know, because you're not going with the trend. So I'm going to take that into account uh, as well. So, um, so yeah, the sizing is is definitely a super important aspect from for trading. Um, you know, oversizing can can you know one tr- you can have three, and I've done it. I've had you know, two weeks of gains and then oversized on a trade and I'll lose two weeks of gains in yeah. one trade, you know, from making that mistake. Um, I try not to do it anymore. Uh, but you know, sometimes obviously the emotions can take hold, but that's when you got to slap yourself a couple of times in the face and say, okay, get, you know, get, wake up, stop. Um, so yeah, ha- developing a playbook for yourself, recognizing those setups whatever they whatever they might be bull flag cup and handle you know head and shoulders whatever and and associating a different risk with each of them with also the overall market sediment in mind i think is is really the best way to kind of approach that and it's of course it's very personal and um according to your own you know you're going to trade a ten thousand dollar account differently than you're going to trade a fifty thousand dollar account so it's all you got to keep it keep it relative and not risk too much and that's the biggest thing people are going in 10 percent of the portfolios or 15 percent of your portfolios it's you know that's not going to be um sustainable because when it goes against you if you don't manage your risk properly it's going to eat you alive cool so the answer would be that everyone needs to determine their own position size based on their own account size and how much they like the setup and yeah, the overall yeah. sentiment of the market. Yeah, yeah, I would Perfect. say so. Perfect. <laughs> okay, well, we are just about finishing up here, and I have to apologize to everyone who submitted questions because I just enjoyed talking to you so much. I just ask my own questions. So there are a lot of questions I didn't get to. But yeah, I saw some funny ones on, uh, on Twitter. People were asking about you know, some of the some of the members in the tank. Who's my favorite? And all these things. These guys are 
always cracking me up. But that's, you know, that's also what I love about about my community, my room. We all have our inside jokes and our, our things sure. like that. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. It seemed like just a very happy group of people. I'm I really liked it. I liked everyone who asked the questions. They all seem funny. I didn't get a lot of them, but seems like yeah you guys yeah exactly here. inside 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 jokes, yeah so. <laughs> that I always like to say like my whole goal in trading is I just want to make money with my friends and it seems like you guys are doing that yeah 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 through through the good through the thick and the thin <laughs> that's what we do well thank you so much for coming on and honestly I could talk to you for a really long time so I would love to have you back for another episode yeah, yeah, we can definitely do that. Maybe we'll do something um, uh, more, more um, speaking more in depth about options. That could be uh, that could be interesting uh, for, for your sure. Listeners, I would because love... I know you come from the small cap, you know, world. Yes, I would love to do that. And usually, Justin, my co-host, is Mister Options, so he mm. usually has a lot of questions. But you know, just, just me, and I don't know that much about it, so. No, yeah, let's totally do it again. Um, I love uh, I love what you're doing. You know, getting information out there uh, for traders and people to listen to, and um, I think it's really great just to be able to spread knowledge. You know, because trading is is hard, and the more little things, you know, the biggest thing is that you can learn something a little something from everybody. You know, it might be one yeah. thing that a person says that they take away and they bring home to heart that can really mean something to them. And, you know, that's why, at least for me, I'm always like a big person of like, I'm not, um, uh, yeah, I do this professionally or whatever professionally. And, but I'm not, I don't consider myself a guru or a guru or I don't consider myself the best trader. I always try to, I'm always a student. There's always more I can learn. There's always ways I can improve. And that's just so huge on having that mindset and, and being spreading information and and stuff like this so i think it's great you know um what you're doing having this podcast and getting getting uh information out there to people and uh i'll definitely tell bear uh, bear fucker to to reach out to because he's he's definitely got a lot of um information singles doubles is great you know brad is awesome yeah um, i feel like it's all about giving sh- back you know yeah i just came into this community a woman which has been i mean that you're, there's not a ton of women. I didn't yeah. know anything about trading. I certainly don't have a big social media following. So I have just had to sort of like get, do the podcast through just like sheer willpower. And it has, I'm just so thankful for the people that have come on and listened to it. And it's it, it like, I love my community that I've created through the podcast and just the people I've gotten to meet and the things that mm-hmm. I have learned, his, it's, I really love it. It's like the favorite part of my week for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. That's what's um, that's what can be great. And and you know, like I said, I mean, trading too can be, you know, pre- alienating. You know, a lot of times because you're staring at a screen. I mean, you know, a lot of people. Well, for me too. I mean, you know, you're alone looking at a screen a lot. You know, uh, and if you have a bad day or a great day. You know, first off, you don't want to be gloating. If you had a great day, oh hey, I made five thousand dollars today. What did you do? You know, <laughs> or yeah. hey, you know, I I, I, uh, I lost five thousand dollars today. Like I feel like the biggest, you know, piece of crap on the on the on the earth. <laughs> um, but having that community of people that um, go through the same ups and downs, um, and just to be there for each other and to say, oh hey, you know, I noticed this on on you know, Fubo stock or whatever, whenever it does this, this might be interesting. And then you say, Oh, yeah, I never saw that. And it could be something that you know, you take home and you can make money off of or whatever the case might be. So you know, like I said, you can learn something from everyone. And um, everyone being a a community, a healthy community together, uh, not hating on each other and just supporting each other is is just the best thing and and giving back um, when you when you've been through it, you know, after because Every day, there's probably a new person that puts some money in the market and says, "Okay, I want to try this." And 
they're, you know, running into oncoming traffic, basically, <laughs> you know, um, and to try to help them. That's, that's just the biggest thing. Is, is, is yeah. So that's, it's just great. For sure. Well, thank you so much for your time. And honestly, I'd love to check out your room. I just, you're a fun person to be around. So love to hang out with oh, you. Well, well, yeah, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. I had a lot of fun speaking with you. And um, yeah, when you're, you're, uh, uh, Jason, Mr. Options comes back. We'll have to, you know, schedule <laughs> when you guys have some more time. We can do some talking about options, uh, maybe some more into some uh, trading psychology. And uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be fun. I'd love to. I'd love to. All right. Well, thank you. I hope you guys enjoyed that episode as much as I did. Thank you so much for listening. And thank you to our producer, Joel Edwards and Chesley Lowe for the banjo music. See you next time. Thank you.